for those of you who are in attendance. Those of you who are tuning in online, hello. Welcome to the Newport News Church of Christ. We're here on 72nd Street in Newport News, Virginia. All right. Today, we're going to be talking about the Sermon on the Mount. We're in part four of Sermon of the Mount, murder versus anger, murder versus anger. If you have your Bibles this morning, let us go over to Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five and verses 21 through 26 are our verses that we're going to go through this morning. Matthew 21, 5, 21 through 26. Matthew 5, 21 through 26. But before we get into the text and start reading, I want to ask a question. What are some of the things that make us angry? <laughs> absolutely. Other people, yes, absolutely. Other people do make us angry. Uh, yeah, other people is a big part. Yes, brother. Road rage, road rage is very, that's, that's one of mine too. I think I have a lot of road rage, especially since I want to do the speed. Okay, no more than road rage. Way faster than speed. Yes. Spiritual matters. Things of the, uh, as they say, the religious world. Yeah, that could, that could make us angry too. Especially when those things that they say aren't necessarily true. And they depict God in ways that he shouldn't be depicted. Those are very, very good. Yeah, people that think they're better than you. Mm-hmm. All right, now that we talked about others, let's turn it back on ourselves. What are things that we do that make others angry? Yeah, what do we do that typically make others angry? Yeah, I get that too. <laughs> Being a know it all, yes. Yes, yes, brother. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Those same road, those same road rage and road rage incidents that we just talked about, we could do those to other people. Especially when we're in a hurry and they might not be in a hurry that at that moment. And we might come off certain ways as being a know-it-all, even in a religious sense, that could make other people angry. Yes, brother. Mm. In this particular sense, I was talking about with each other in the, in the Lord's church. But, <laughs> but I can truly understand they, they will get angry because what they feel like is they learn their entire life is the correct way. And when you show them something contrary or something different, their number one reaction is anger. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But with each other, mostly, is definitely something that we could work on. Because oftentimes we may be right, but it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I find that the most thing that makes people angry is being corrected. Yeah, that goes for everybody. But in the, in the Lord's church specifically, matters that aren't, you know, cut and dry, scriptural matters like why Nicodemus came at night or what Jesus wrote in the sand, things of that nature, people will argue about that. People will get angry about that, even though in the grand scheme, it really doesn't matter. But let's get into the verse. Let's start Matthew 5, verse 21. Very good discussion starting off. Matthew 5, verse 21. <clears throat> Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. In verse 22, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with thy brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Verse 23, therefore... If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled with thy brother, and then come offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way of him, lest at any time the adversary shall deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou 
be cast into prison. And last, verse 26, verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the other most farthing. Very, very good knowledge, very good information here. And we're going to break that down. Let's go take a couple steps back and let's go to verse 22. And that one word, Rekha, it's a uh, British English word. So it's not really, it's used, it's seen here multiple times, but it means calling someone empty headed. Calling someone empty headed, or in other words, not smart or dumb or stupid. But also, let's go down to verse 23. Therefore, if thou bringest thy gifts to the altar, and there rememberest that thou, that thy brother have an ought against thee, in verse 24, leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled with thy brother, and then come offer thy gift. And I know the title of this is anger, murder versus anger. But these aren't physical acts. These are all matters of the heart. These are all spiritual matters. What Jesus here is telling, what Jesus is telling us here is that we have to get our hearts right before we offer our gift to the Lord. When we're partaking in the Lord's Supper, we say, let's prepare our hearts and minds. This is another blessing of being able to come here every, every Lord's day. Because when we're out in the world Monday through Saturday, what are we thinking about? All the things that are going on in our lives, all the bills, the car may be breaking down, something may be going on with the children, something may be going on at work, something may be going on with you, you may be having a feud with your neighbor, or another neighbor having another feud with a neighbor down the street, and you just happen to be caught in the middle of it. All the things that are pouring on to us in the world, we can let all that go and just be here and focus on the spiritual matters. But let's say that we have an argument with someone, as we do. We just talked about things that we can do to make people angry. We even talked about things that other people do to make us angry. But before we come here, we have to let that go. Because how could you offer your full heart, your full mind to the Lord if something else is on it? If something else is taking away your thoughts? Because when we're in here, our thoughts should be on absolutely God. All the things that he's done for us, all the things that he continues to do for us, our thoughts should be on how we can help others to be in this place as well. But our thoughts are often on, well, me and my spouse had an argument. Me and my, me and my brother had a feud over something that and when it comes down to it, probably doesn't even matter at the end of the day. Or me and sister or brother so-and-so had a disagreement a couple of weeks ago and I'm still angry about it. Jesus is telling you to fix that first, get that right, and then come here. If you're having an argument with your spouse, maybe when we did have afternoon service, maybe go to the afternoon, fix that first and then come to the afternoon service. Have a better heart, have a better mind when coming here. But let's take a couple of steps back. Let's go to verse 20. Accept your righteousness surpass that of the scribes and Pharisees. It was time for him to start explaining what he meant in Matthew 20. He started comparing the old law, thou shalt not murder, and made, to the, and made the point that murder is a result of sins already committed. He is pro he's proving to his disciples that the heart is just as important as the laws regarding murder, adultery, swearing, and et cetera. Because oftentimes we just think sin as the act of doing something. Yes, there's an act of thinking it too. Because envy, it may, it, it may lead to a physical act, but envy first starts in the heart. Covetousness, you might, yes, ma'am. No, go ahead. No, you're, you're okay. The tongue is mightier than the sword, and the tongue can also cut deeper. The tongue knows things that the sword may not know. 
getting back to the point, covetousness, which she made a very good point as well, tongue. Covetousness may not be an outward act, and it's really not, because someone could have a lot of possessions, but truly not care about those possessions, truly not put those possessions before God. But covetousness is an inward act. It's an act of the heart. Where do you hold those possessions? Where do you put those possessions in the scale of what comes first? Is it before God? Is it before your fellow man? That's covetousness. But those things are the matter. Those things start in the heart. Those things start with where you put them in your heart. Now let's break down the text. Matthew 5, 21, the law and the result of disobedience. Matthew 22 is the righteousness that exceeds. Now let's get into the degrees of that. Whoever is angry is in danger of judgment. Whoever insults his brother is in danger of the Supreme Court. See, when you're angry, you're in danger of judgment, which means when you're angry, those things that you may be thinking about in anger, you might not do. We all get angry. We all just said it. We all get angry. In traffic, you can get angry. But we also seeing those road rage incidents turn into things physical. Yes, ma'am. No, go ahead. Yes. Be angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. Very important verse, especially when we're talking about this. I felt like he was going to answer the question. That's why I went right to him before I even said it. I knew he was going to answer it. That's why I went to him. No, no, no. That's exactly why I did. I knew he was going to answer it. I knew it. I, I seen it. Because as soon as she said, without cause, his hand went straight out. Like, okay, he's going to answer this one. But yes, he's exactly right. Without cause. Things of like race and gender and things of that nature. People, are, people get angry at people for those things. That's without cause. As we say, things that happen for no reason whatsoever. People are even killed because of their race and gender. Because other people are angry at those people for just something that's out of their control. Mm -hmm. But yes, that is, that is what it means for without cause. No, there's no reason for it. There's no reason for you to be angry because I'm black. There's no reason for me to be angry because you're white or because I'm a man or because you're a woman or anything that has to do with anything that I can't control. Whoever says you fool is in danger of fiery hell. But let's explain the difference. Under the old law, it's murder. It's just the act. But under the new law, Anger, insults, or terms of abuse, or verbal insults are all things that you should not do. See, the law was more, it's less specific. It was more just the physical act. Thou shalt not kill. But as she said, the tongue is sharper than the sword. You can kill with the tongue the same way that you can kill with the sword. How many people are bullied into hurting themselves those they aren't physically being beaten up no but things that are said to them hurt them so much that they even decide to take their own lives which is why we should be careful of what we say to people and how we treat people what is the difference between the righteousness of the pharisees and what christ expects what is the difference between the righteousness that the Pharisees showed and what Christ expects? Yeah. On the outside, there were white sepulchers, but on the inside, they contained dead men's bones. Yes, ma'am. We will come back. But even today, we see that today. We see people who are on the outside, they proclaim to be such high religious figures, but on the inside, you got it? Okay. Jesus gave us an example of this with the two men who were praying. One man looked up to the heavens and he said, I fasted for 30 days. I, I read my scribal daily. I do all the things of the law. He was just bigging himself up. But the other man, he said, didn't even have the, the heart to look up to the heavens. And he said, I am a sinner. 
false prayer versus true prayer, false righteousness versus true righteousness. The man who didn't even want to look up to the heavens and professed his sins and said that he needed help was the one who was truly righteous versus the man who only bigged up himself and said, I do this, I do this, I do this. What, what, what does God have to give him if he's already, if he's already got it? More importantly, does any of this apply to us? Absolutely. I never really understood the wearing the cross part. I, I, I could never get it. I, I never understood that. One. And the bumper stickers honk if you love Jesus and they have all these different verses on it and stuff like that. Or they're wearing the, the uh, place that they worship, their insignia and address and things on their bumper sticker to show I go to church. I'm a person of God. Look at me. But here we have our cars in the parking lot. They don't have those things on them. And we're here. And we truly want to come and out and help people, truly bring people to Christ. That's the difference. It's a big difference. What does he tell us to do to make it right? If we do have those things, if we do have that fair saying religious this is about us the our religion what can we do to what does he tell us to do to make it right yes when we do have an issue when we have that when we come here and we have that outward smile on our face when we have something going on internally we go make it right she's right we go make it right notice he said drop whatever you're doing and go make it right this isn't a okay i'll do it after no you do it right then you do it right then because the matters of the heart need to be taken care of right then. Exactly, it could fester. Be reconciled, do it quickly, do it before you worship. And the benefit of dealing with it quickly, you take care of the issue as soon as it happens. You not only save your soul, but you could save someone else's soul as well. The application for us today. Is it okay to be angry with your brother or sister in Christ? Is it okay to be angry with them? Absolutely. Precisely. And in all honesty, you could be remembering it and it could really hurt you and and not even thinking about it at all. Are there times that we make up reasons to be angry with our neighbor? There are. Oftentimes, I live in the suburbs. The main thing that we argue about is parking. Parking. People parking in front of other people's houses. People parking in front of the mailbox, especially with the mailman in our neighborhood. If you have a car in front of the mailbox, he's not going to drop your mail off. You can get it on, well, if it's Saturday, you can get it on Monday. So oftentimes we do make up things to be angry about with our neighbor. Well, look, at his, look at so-and-so's yard. Why are they not taking care of their yard? You could have did that, or could have just helped you out. Could have helped you out. Could have helped you out. Here, I got a lawnmower right here. I'll do it for you. And then this will show you just how to do it. And then next time you can do it. But yeah, we oftentimes make up things to be angry about with our neighbors. Even some people get angry if your trash cans are in front of your house for too long. A trash man ran on Monday. Why are these trash cans still here? It's Wednesday. We do make up things to be angry about with our neighbors. But what will anger cause you to do? Absolutely. Anger will cause you to sit. When you let that anger fester in you, it causes anything. That, anything can happen when you let that anger fester. When you, we see people who get so angry with their neighbors. This is even a TV show uh, about 
neighbors who murdered each other, who murdered their other neighbor because of who knows. Who knows why? Their music was up too loud one, one night or something. That's real. Because that's why we're here. We're here to help each other. You can help out your neighbor with whatever issue that you may have. The trash can's been out there for too long. Maybe they had an injury or something and they couldn't bring them back and turn in the house. You, you walk by your neighbor's house all the time. You know exactly where the trash cans go. If they go in the front of the house, put this, roll them up there for your neighbor. Don't complain about it. Bring them to the association or whatever that people do. We'll let that anger fester and it turns into something bigger. Oftentimes, especially in the country, people argue over property line. Mm -hmm. Your fence is two inches right over into my property line. Now I'm angry about it. Two inches. You're angry about two inches. Some people are angry about a foot. But when we put all these things out here, it sounds, it sounds silly to us. But people get mad at these things. People get angry at these things. And in their anger, they do things and they sin. They tear up their neighbor's fence. If the dog, if their neighbor's dog maybe wanders into their yard and uses the bathroom, they put out something for the dog and kill the dog. You do things that you shouldn't do out of anger. When you should go to your neighbor, like she said, openly have an open and honest conversation with your neighbor and try to resolve the issue before you do something that you can't take back. See the power of just having one conversation. She didn't get angry at her neighbor for putting up a privacy fence. She just asked why. And she had a very legitimate reason for why she put up a fence. For protection of her house, for protection of her, which is very understandable. Now, when we get angry at those things, is this the righteousness that exceeds that of the Pharisees? When we take our anger out on people, when we hold in that resentment, when we hold in that anger, is this the righteousness that exceeds the Pharisees? No. Is this the righteousness that God expects of his followers? Yes, sir. No, no, you made a very good point. Absolutely. And when Jesus suffering the ultimate pain, torture, what did he say? He didn't say, he didn't say, I'm angry. Father, take revenge. Exactly. And having a war of words or someone cutting you off in traffic, someone putting up a privacy fence, someone being a couple inches too over your too far over the property line, someone having their grass uncut or trash cans out is small compared to what Christ went through on the cross. Something we should always look to, as Brother Emmett said. We should always look back to that, especially in moments of where we are angry. Well, let's finish up here. Uh, <clears throat> Do we have the righteousness that is needed to be a disciple of Christ? What are we angry about today? The world is angry today too, about pretty much everything, everything. They just passed a law banning abortion, people are angry about it. They just passed a law for gun control, people are angry about it. Gas prices slowly going up. People are angry about it. The world today is angry about pretty much everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And the ten dollars though is very much worse than for what is it four seventy nine right now? Yeah. Being self aware. And dealing with conflicts are life skills that take you a long way in this life, but they also take you a long way in dealing with your brothers and sisters in Christ.
all the time at work, I think it's pretty much once a year we have conflict resolution seminars or something of that nature to resolve conflicts with people at work, with people with customers and all types of other things. You can take those skills and even resolve conflicts in the church, in the Lord's church with your brothers and sisters. Because we do fight. All families fight. This is one of the biggest families you could ever have. And we're going to fight. But when we fight, are we going to deal with it right then? Or are we going to wait? Are we going to deal with it tonight or tomorrow? Take care of it right then and there. Yes, sir. Anybody got anything to add before we close? Thank you all for your attention and your comments. Let's get ready for worship. <laughs>